you're going to see today, which um, Linda Bowman, Dr. Linda Bowman, will talk about in a minute, it is one of its kind in the nation. It is receiving national recognition and awards for the new way of learning that it is imparting upon our students. So we train more than 90% of the first responders and more than half of the state of nurses. And our nurses sit at the same exams as a nurse with a four hundred degree <coughs> and have very good pass rates and, and in fact are key to meeting the workforce shortage <coughs> with the nursing industry in Colorado. Um, let me talk a little bit about our students. Um, we really reach out to all areas of the spectrum, all parts of Colorado, and all demographics. And more than 31% of our students are minorities. We have a greater representation of minority access within our institutions than the population at large. About half of all minority students in higher education um, that, that are minorities are within our walls. So we really have a very concerted, very deliberate um, diversity effort that is important for our mission and important to create opportunities for all of Colorado. 59% of our students are female. That's a trend that's occurring nationally where more females are going to college than males. And in the four years, just to give you um, perspective, four years, about 55% of the students are female. 54% of our students are under the age of 25. Although we have an average age of, now it's about 27 to 28 years old, increasingly that's going down and increasingly throughout our system we're seeing younger and younger students. Meanwhile, the vast majority of our students are Colorado residents as opposed to non-residents. Um, so we're really excited about what we do in community colleges. There are a number of challenges within our economy that we rise to um, that I think that we uniquely within community colleges are able to address and I'm going to talk about them very briefly in a minute. But there are a lot of opportunities out there for us to play a vital role in creating a better standard of living and enriching the lives of Colorado. First of all, I, I want to talk about some of the challenges we face. One is that the economy is in recession. I think there is no doubt about that. And typically what you see in community colleges is when the economy goes into recession, our enrollment skyrockets at the very same time when the state economy is not doing well and therefore state revenues and state support is going down. And that's no different than what we're seeing today. Today for this fall, what we've seen is we have close to 6% growth in our resident full-time equivalent enrollment. It's pretty dramatic and that's off of a 3% gain of last year. So we are meeting the workforce training and retraining <coughs> needs in a recessionary and a recovering economy to help those people who may need um, to brush up on their skills, may be unemployed, or, or those businesses who want to come here um, retrain their staff. Another big challenge that we as an economy in Colorado are facing is that the baby boom generation is retiring. Although we aren't in the labor shortage today based upon where the economy is, we will be in a very severe labor shortage <coughs> in the next five years as the baby boom retires and the baby bus generation moves through the pipeline. Without training um, and without reaching out to populations that otherwise would not have higher education, we are not going to be able to compete in this global economy. Community colleges uniquely are able to provide um, that type of training and those type of skills because we can react very quickly to changes in the economy and changes in needs of the business community. Um, case in point, down at Trinidad State Junior College, we learned and worked with the electrical companies, we learned that half of all the linesmen will be retiring in the next five years. If you don't think we've got a crisis there, um, it's, it's a very silent crisis. We created a program at Trinidad State Junior College with the support of industry to educate those linesmen. Similarly, the energy industry has really grown in Colorado over the last five years. We've created unique programs with industry at Red Rocks Community College, Colorado Northwestern Community College, and Trinidad State Junior College. We work in a significant manner to address the workforce shortages that are out in the community and in a very quick, flexible way we can meet the needs of business. Um, again, you heard me talk about our diversity and our increased diversity. Um, in order to compete in the worldwide marketplace and given the looming workforce shortage five years from now, we need to reach out to populations that otherwise wouldn't come to college. We need to reach out and make sure that we are pulling as many people into this educational system as possible and making them ready for careers <coughs> and enabling them 
to have a higher standard of living. So with that, I, I just wanted to give you sort of a taste of what we do in community colleges. We're very proud of what we do at our 13 colleges and roughly uh, 40 locations throughout the state. And we're very proud of what we do here at Community College of Aurora. You're going to see two really phenomenal programs today. And I want to thank Dr. Lynn Bowman, who's just been extremely innovative in creating um, career enhancements and career opportunities for Coloradans and just thinking outside of the box in terms of education. I mean, you and I all know that, I mean, we maybe bemoan the fact that students today are sitting there in their virtual world with their computers all hooked up to them and immersed in some way, shape, or form that we don't even relate to because we aren't quite the digital natives they are. And she at her college has taken this to the next level and said, okay, this is the way students learn. They learn through immersion. They learn through simulated environments. Let's get them excited about this and put it to the good use for all career training here in Colorado and say, okay, if this is the way you learn and it's going to enhance your learning and make you a better paramedic um, going on to tremendous opportunities, let's meet you on your playing field and show you how much better you can be. And so with that, we are so fortunate to have Dr. Linda Bowman here who serves a dual role President of Community College of Aurora and also Vice President of Academic and Student Services for the entire system of our colleges. So, Dr. Bowman. Well, thank you so much, Nancy and Barb and Sue, and we are delighted to have you here. And my goal is to be brief because I think seeing is believing. So I'm going to just tell you a few quick things and then let you be immersed in um, these environments and, and the way that we handle instruction here at Community College of Aurora and also throughout our system. And I know we've got a little bit of a business meeting that you've got to have here too. I'm actually a fellow Rotarian in the Aurora Club and appreciate the work you do. And in fact, our club has sponsored at our other campus at Center Tech a lab to help students who are learning their basic skills, who are needing brush up in order to be college level. And so I, I'm very appreciative of the commitment that all of you make every week and throughout the year as Rotarians. You're going to experience two simulation environments. One here in this building, which is our emergency medical services program that Nancy referenced, and one in another building here, and we've got, we've changed the breadcrumbs around so the signs are now pointing to the film school for those of you who signed up to do that. But if you have time, I hope you'll try to do both because they are very, very different. The whole theory around this, and Nancy uh, alluded to this also, is that students really are different. They come to us with technology skills. They're really quite capable in that way, far more so than middle-aged ladies like me, to tell you the truth. And also, they think differently. Their expectations are different. They're having more technology in high school. But we do serve such a breadth of students from all kinds of backgrounds, some who have lots of academic preparation, others who don't, some who come from families with professionals in the home, others who do not that we have to be very creative, and I'd say our faculty are unparalleled in their ability to truly teach and work with students. So you'll see an EMS here in the Center for Simulation, environments where a student learning to be an EMT or a paramedic suspends disbelief and is out on the street or is in that home or is in that restaurant or bar or wherever doing what they would do to save someone, and you'll see how that is in action. You'll see in the film school, students are hands-on right away. They are able to write stories, they learn to communicate, they learn to use equipment, to edit, all those high skills that are not just for Hollywood, but are for all the content, whether it's your websites, whether it's for television commercials. I mean, everything we do now has digital content, so it's really broad application. And what's also key to this, instead of a kind of a lecture like we're in right now, where I'm talking at you, and some of you seem pretty attentive, and I'm impressed, but if I go on too long, I know it'll change. <laughs> but it's interactive learning. So students learn critical thinking, they learn problem solving, they have to work in teams, and that's what we've been told by businesses <coughs> that students lack when they come out. They're so focused and insular. Sometimes that technology is just about Facebook or text messaging or whatever. We're taking those skills and putting those to use so that they can be that kind of prepared workforce that we all need. 
this room 